Well, the first thing is you just become kind of indifferent. Okay, I say kind of indifferent. You actually become indifferent. I mean, it just like the narcissist was never there in the first place. Granted, you learn from the past experience. And granted, you are putting into play some of the things that you have learned. And we're going to talk about that uh, in just a moment. But um, how do you know that you have finally defeated the narcissist? Is It just isn't a big deal anymore. You're no longer obsessed with it as you once were. Number two is you are perfectly happy being alone. Now, one of the things that I find as I talk to people who have been abused by narcissists is that uh, they, they have this thing which is kind of reminiscing, not the same as rumination, but it's reminiscing about the good times. Uh, they did have good conversations with their narcissist. There were times that were happy. They were delusional. They were being tricked at the time, but still, at the moment, they, they did enjoy it, and they, they kind of liked that, and they, they kind of miss it. Well, you know you've defeated the narcissist when you're beyond that. You're past it. Now, when it comes to gray rocking, you know, where you just don't respond or react to the narcissist in any way, this is beyond gray rocking. Because with gray rocking, that is a, an intentional, mindful action. You are doing it on purpose. But when you have defeated the narcissist, it's not something you try to do. Gray rocking is just something you are. You don't even think about it. That is your mode. That is, well, it's your lifestyle. Number three is this. You actually enjoy the solitude. Now, we mentioned earlier that you kind of miss, you know, some of those good times you had with your narcissist, those nice conversations. Maybe you had, uh, maybe you went someplace together and you maybe have some old photographs somewhere on your camera or wherever, if you haven't deleted them yet, and you look at those and say, yeah, that was, uh, what happened? I mean, we were having such a good time. Well, now you are totally alone without this individual, and you like it. You really, truly enjoy it. And we mentioned this just a second ago, but that, that's, that, that mindset where you wish you were kind of sort of back in that relationship, you just don't want the negative part of it, oh, that's not there anymore. It's just totally gone. You were pleased as punch to be all by yourself without that narcissist because you know. You know that he or she was trouble and that all the good times were just fake. Number four is you become unengaged. Okay, let's say the, um, the, the discard has come. The narcissist has gone on his way and maybe he or she has engaged in... Um, some backstabbing, you know, the smear campaign, and you are aware of that. But um, now the narcissist is coming back and trying to hover you in or hoover you in, like the vacuum cleaner, hoover vacuum cleaner, trying to suck you back into a relationship. And they may have a story. They may seem to be very repentant, that they admit that they were wrong, and uh, maybe they are. I don't know. But the fact is... They have been so hurtful so many times for so long, so often, that you know, you inherently know, 99% certainty, that they're just doing it again. They're trying to pull you back in because they need you for supply. They're trying to suck you back into their sphere. But you are so unengaged with this person that that hoovering, that attempt to pull you back in, it just doesn't work. I mean, it doesn't, it has no, you don't even think about it. It just, no, bye, go away. As maybe you don't even tell them to go away. You just ignore them completely. And finally, they get the message, it's over, I've been defeated, and they go on to their next victim. All right, number five is that you can't be triggered. Now, when we say can't be triggered, that goes beyond saying we won't be triggered. Sometimes, you know, we make this conscious effort that uh, the narcissist is not going to trigger me ever again. They're not going to say anything that gets me going. If they are doing that backstabbing smear campaign thing, whatever, um, it doesn't bother me. It really bothered me at one time, but now it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, just this is what they do. 
And if people are going to believe him, they're going to believe him. You just can't be triggered. That is an indicator that uh, the narcissist is just uh, swiped clean out of your mind, almost, and uh, he or she has been totally defeated. Number six is what I call self-gaslighting. You know, gaslighting occurs when some other person tries to convince you and others that you are somehow imbalanced, maybe even mentally ill, and there are other iterations of gaslighting, but uh, such as, you know, feelings of guilt or whatever, but um, we come to a point where we gaslight ourselves. You know, it's kind of like the, um, the narcissist or the person who is gaslighting you will light the fuse, but, uh, or, or they will, let's phrase it this way, they light the kindling, but we fan the fire. We keep it going. I mean, they're long gone out of our lives, but we are still keeping the fire going on gaslighting in the sense that we are wondering to ourselves that, uh, man, did I handle that right? Or could I have done something different? Or maybe maybe it was partially my fault. Or we may say, you know, I was so dumb. How could I be so stupid to get in that relationship in the first place? Have you ever considered that's gaslighting? Because you're calling yourself stupid. No one else is doing it, just you. You're gaslighting yourself. So once we get past that gaslighting, that's a good indication that, hey, we've defeated the narcissist. He or she is uh, something of the past. All right, that takes us to number eight, which is we now have, or number seven, rather, um, it is as if the narcissist never existed. Now, I'm not positively sure that you ever get to that point in your life because you got a memory, right? And you can't get this person out of your memory once you hear something. You can't unhear it once you see something. You can't unsee it once you experience something. You can't unexperience. But this person, this narcissist and all the abuse that you went through is so minimalized that it's almost as if they just never existed because you know that because you're back doing what you did before. The narcissist was even known to you. You're back with the same mindset that you had before. The narcissist was even known to you. It's as if they never existed. And the only place they exist is in your memory. All right, that takes us to number eight, and you know you've defeated the narcissist when you have developed an intolerance for toxic people. For some reason, particularly people who are empaths or individuals who have Asperger's syndrome, it's almost like we feel obligated to be abused. It's kind of like, well, that's the reason I'm on planet Earth is so abusive people have somebody to beat up on. Where do we get that idea? I don't know that any of us will think that uh, in those terms, but it's it's more of an attitude that we have. Like we have this uh, position in life that uh, we are genetically predisposed to be uh, disposable. The fact of the matter is, no, we're not. And we are now a little bit more sensitive to toxic people. One of the things we learn through our engagement with a narcissist, which sometimes lasts for years, is we understand how toxic people can be. I mean, they can really be toxic. And not only so, but we understand now some of the warning signs that we missed. You know, those red flags that we missed the first time, or the second time, or the third time. Well, now we're becoming much more sensitive to uh, toxic people. And those red flags that we missed before are now very obvious, they're very clear red flags. Number nine is we just accept reality and we just walk away. Now, when I wrote this, I was thinking about flying monkeys. When I was putting together my thoughts for this presentation is, uh, I don't know about you, but the flying monkeys, you know, that thing where you have these... Um, agents of the narcissist that he recruits and convinces them that you're the bad guy. You know, those people, uh, some people call them narcissists by proxy. That was really bothersome. You know, these people that you thought were your dear friends, good friends, good buddies, uh, all of a sudden they're turning against you and they're siding with this individual who is, uh, well, nuts. 
You know, and it should be very obvious, even though it wasn't obvious to you or to me at the time. But we expect it to be obvious to them because now it is obvious to us. But there comes a point in time where we just realize that's the way it is. You know, just like we were deceived, they are being deceived. And so we learn to just walk away even from these people who were our former friends, realizing that you got to give them time just like you needed time. You got to give them time to come to understand the truth, what it really is. So you are able to accept that reality and walk away from it. Just give them time. If they come back, they come back. If they don't come back, well, maybe you shouldn't have had them in your circle of friends in the first place. Number 10 is you become wary of new relationships. You no longer assume the best in everybody. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, the way that I see other people is I assume they're the good guys. You know, I, I just assume that, uh, well, the way that I like to frame this is the old TV westerns, you know, back in the 40s, 50s, and even into the 60s, where everybody was a good guy except for the bad guy. And the bad guy was clearly uh, clearly evident. You knew who the bad guy was. He is a guy with the black hat and the mustache, and he had this attitude about him, and it was just clear-cut, you know, white hats versus black hats. Well, once you get over a narcissist, that uh, doesn't work anymore. That perception of society, social interactions, has su suddenly disappeared, just dissipated. And now it's kind of like the sun rose in the east, and it's full daylight, and now you can see. Just because these people are nice doesn't mean that they are good people. Just because they're acting friendly doesn't mean they're friends. And you understand, you're not paranoid. I'm not talking about that. Well, you shouldn't be paranoid, but you just have this understanding of human nature that probably you didn't have before. Otherwise, you would not have been enmeshed in this relationship with a narcissist. And I got to tell you, in my case, uh, it took uh, several episodes several different narcissists before it finally occurred to me, you know, not everybody is a good guy. You got to stop thinking that way. You got to, you got to stop thinking that just because somebody is nice to you doesn't mean uh, they like you. It could mean they're trying to sell you a car or something, you know. Number 11, finally, is this. You get to a point where, you know, you're just totally over it. I mean, just absolutely positively over it. And you realize but this person is a pathological narcissist. They've been doing what they're doing probably since childhood on some level. And the day they die, they could live to be 90 years old and they will still be scamming people. They'll still be deceiving people. And so you recognize that you're one of many, many, many victims this person has had in their lives. It's like a conveyor belt, and you're just one of the boxes on the conveyor belt. There's boxes behind you, there's boxes ahead of you, and now you are off off the line. You're, you're not one of the boxes anymore, but you understand there are more victims of this person to come. You feel sorry for them, but you also understand that the narcissist is now give it up on you because there's no more any there, there, there's no more supply any more supply to be had from you they've uh it's not that they've pumped all the air out of you it's just that you've turned the pump off so that they can't so they're going to go on to that next person and so you know you just let them you can't stop them from being narcissists because it's innate you know it's inherent it's pathological this is what they are you see on your screen those two Rectangle boxes, if you like what you hear, want to hear some more, want to keep on talking, well, let's keep it going. All you got to do is click on one of those boxes, and we will keep the conversation going. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by. See you all next time.